Hey guys, how's it going? James here from Cardio Etc. Not too big of a job on duty today, just a couple of quick ones that I've got to do to finish getting everything sort of wired up, ready to go. Um, you saw in one of my last videos that I got the amp almost completely wired up. All I really have to do left is get power to it and run a subwoofer cable. I'm thinking I'll probably leave the subwoofer cable till like one of the very last jobs I have to do. I'll do that when I install the subwoofer. So I'm not going to do that today, but I do want to try and get hooked up to power. By the way guys, there's the amp. Because some of you may be new here and haven't seen it. It's a Rockford Falsgate T1000X5AD. So, what I have to do is I've got here my T-Spec two fuse holder distribution block thing. So I've got that. I've got a 40 amp fuse and a 100 amp fuse. Obviously the 100 amp fuse is going to this amplifier. That is what is, what is recommended for it by the Rockford Falsgate website does a thousand watts RMS so if you imagine a thousand watts at you know 12 volts when the car isn't turned on that's 1200 um, no, 100 amps at 12 volts when the uh, car isn't turned on that's 1200 watts so that's plenty of fuse power and I've got a 40 amp fuse here for this uh, 230 volt uh, power inverter which converts 12 volts to 230 volts with a plug socket thing here and 40 amps is what that is rated at as well so those are going to be going in there and this little fuse holder if you don't know already is going to be going under this thing here I still don't really know what this is for but it's part of the car something to do with the car so this is going to be going just there hiding underneath it so let me quickly just get this out of the way so it's easier to work on and see okay so I got everything out of here I haven't got the spare wheel out so it's easier to be in here and work on it so yeah, this little T-spec fuse holder which has zero gauge input on one side and two four gauge outputs on the other side. So this is going just here and then this thing still sits down over top of it. Perfectly. And <laughs> project anti-gap. <laughs> so that fits perfectly. So yeah, this Rock and Fosgate one gauge, I originally had it coming out of this hole which I made here, but that was for a different design. I since changed my design after I did this. So what I'm going to do instead is get the right angle drill, drill a similar hole in the side of here for the wire to come out of, and then there'll be more two holes here for the four gauges, well the four gauge and the eight gauge to go into. The four gauge will go along and side and around to the amplifier and the eight gauge will pop out of probably here somewhere and go to the inverter. So I wonder if I can, if I'll be able to shovel this back in here, I don't know. Might be easier with the back seats folded forward. There she goes. And this thing is in the way. There we go. Okay. So if I just shove this all back in here, would it just loop up? I think it would. Yeah, so I think rather than just cutting off one foot of power cable, I'll probably end up just cutting it straight and then I'll just have the excess just sort of looping around inside here. There's no mechanics or anything under here. There is a couple of things up here which help fold the seat for, but it's not really doing much. It's not in the way, and I can see the cable there is just looping behind that bit of plastic there. So she'll be right there. So what I think I need to do now is drill myself a hole here, cut that, get it loaded into this, get the fuses which I have put over there, loaded into this, and then look at a couple holes here and measure out some power wire. Okay, so I've got my right angle drill here with a little hole cutting bit in it. Just runs off a 12 volt battery. Doesn't quite fit in, but I'll be able to get in on an angle, I think. And once that's in a bit closer, it'll, I think it'll be fine. So I'll just... Uh... There we go. Oh, can I get it back out now? There we go. So the hole's obviously a wee bit on an angle, but that's not a big deal. Okay. I wonder if I can get this through here without having to lift any of this up. There we go. Got it. Now I need to just cut that. Oh god, these things are hard to cut. Rock and Fuzz get wire is so good. Okay. Oh, 
Oh well, I got it without making a mess. Well done me. Okay, so now this should just shove all the excess back in there and then that will sit down there. So now what I think I need to do is run a fake wire from here around to the amplifier and see how much length I need and then cut it out of the power wire. That's what I'll do. Okay, so I used uh, my mouse wire thing to sort of measure out the distance to the fuse block. Got the length I needed and cut it from some of this really nice high quality Monster Powerflex cable. So this should just loop around. Yep, that'll be enough. So now I have to complete the magic trick of getting this 4 gauge into this power block. And it is a magic trick. All right, it does go in there, but like this little block thing is actually starting to sort of break apart a wee bit. Now, well, let's try and get it in. Okay. So I have to put this end in the fuse holder first because you kind of have to do a push and twist method to get it to actually go in there. So once I've got this in there, then I can plug it in and start running it backwards to the fuse block. <laughs> Pretty good. Okay, so now I have to get the four gauge like into the plastic there I think. It's still gonna reach. Yep, yep, we got the right length. So that should go in there now. Oh yeah. So now the trick is getting it to go around the corner and down to there. harder than I thought it was. So I'd be able to just sort of, oh no, I don't know if this is going to work. I thought I'd be able to just sort of push it both ends back in, but I don't know if there's enough room because this dust stuff doesn't bend. I may have to put that in position, screw it down, and then thread the wire through and into the fuse holder. So 
now I need to know whereabouts the uh, wire for the inverter is going to come out relatively. So it looks like the wire coming off the inverter. So the wire's coming off the inverter. This is going to be about here. It looks like this will be actually long enough to go through into the fuse holder directly without an interconnect. So I'm hoping that's what I'll be able to do. So I think I might give this section a vacuum, put the wheel back in, and then try and wire this up. I do have to ground it somewhere as well. I'm just going to secure this because this is foam. I thought about maybe putting some bolts through and sandwiching it from the other side with washers or something, but I've decided in the end I'm just going to go for some of this uh, big, big wide Velcro strips. They should hold it down pretty well. This, these things are really sticky. So let's uh, try to put this in. There we go. Just drew a little outline of this uh, ground foot here so that I know what area I need to brush the paint off. able to nut and bolt I was able to nut and bolt the ground for the amp but this one I'm not going to be able to because I can't get to the underside of here so what I'm going to do is use one of these nice big thick self tapping uh, gold fat screw things I'm hoping I may be able to get this through the three mil hole I may have to widen up if I start with the screwdriver oh yeah look at that I can get it through a three mil hole sweet now yeah. I'm going to be careful with these because it's very easy to over tighten. There's enough room for a 4 gauge to fit in there so I think two 8 gauges should be totally fine. sort of looping at the bottom here and yeah that you can see like that's lifting the whole thing that's not going anywhere so that'll do yep that's on sweet oh and then this thing this is the whole point of this just goes over top like that 
Okay, there we go guys, I've got everything back together. There's, so there's the inverter. By the way, so what that does if you haven't really figured it out, basically this converts 12 volts to 200 DC to 240 volts AC. This end here plugs in one of the two ports in there. And then you've got, like you can plug anything that runs off AC into here. There is also this little plug here which plugs into it so that you can have a switch on the end of here to turn it on and off if you want. If not, if you don't want to use it otherwise, there is a switch down here for plugging it on and off. And I cut this big hole out of here so that there's good through ventilation of air being sucked in and blown out of this fan at the end here. I do very rarely use this, but I do on occasion. But um, So I'm not too, you know, trying to set it up for perfect ventilation or anything like that. It's just for the odd occasion when I do need it. Otherwise those things just stay in there. And I'm keeping this foam block just to, just to like shove it back in there when I don't need to use it or something, you know. I'll just shove it half in like that. And so yeah, here's one last look at the uh, fuse holder thing before I take it out. This thing comes out. I still don't know what this is for. There's the T-Spec fuse holder with the 1 gauge going in and the 4 gauge and 8 gauge going out. And then this just drops in there and flips back down. This panel... Goes like that. So now this amp is completely wired up to uh, power and everything. Well not actually, I still need a 150 amp ANL fuse. I wonder if we've got one here. Have a look. I've got some at home, but I've got a feeling that they're 200s and 250s. I suppose a 200 will be fine. Like, I've got the correct fusing down in the boot section anyway, so 200. So 50 more amps than needed on the power wire isn't going to make a big deal. Isn't going to be a big deal. So I probably could put this in now, I think. There's my fuse holder. So I just need to take both these ends out and put this 200 amp fuse in line. And we'll be live. spark when I first connected up so I'm just going to do a quick touch. The reason it sparks is just because the capacitors inside the amps and stuff charging up. Be careful when taking that out. There it goes. Sorry guys the SD card uh, like became full up just as I was putting this in and I didn't want to have to put the live wires resting down anywhere while I changed the SD card so I just did it. But anyway yeah the fuse is in, 200 amp, fuse holders back together. So now what I need to do is uh, hook up the RCAs and the remote wire up the front of the car and you'll be good to go. One thing I think I should do though is um, disconnect the speaker plugs from the amplifier because I don't want, even though all the wires that I've ran are like in the doors and taped up, I don't want a chance like them touching any ground or doing any potential shorting. So because pretty soon this amplifier is going to be turning on and receiving signal and trying to pull it out the output side. So what I want to do, what I'm going to do is just try and unplug these uh, speaker plugs because you can plug them back in let them down the track anyway. And there's the front one out. So they can just sit down there, not connected. So now the only things connected are the RCAs and the remote ground and power. Now I can plug the RCAs and the remote wire into the head unit and then I can probably actually tune the amp today as well. Stereo is on at the moment. In all theory, the amplifier should be turned on. Yep, it's on. We have blue LED. So I was 
think I said earlier that I could probably tune it today, which I, I realized I actually can't tune it today because I still have all the factory speakers connected to the output of the head unit. If I could turn the internal amplifier on the head unit off, then I could tune it. But since I can't, then I pretty much can't. I have to wait till I've got all those factory speakers disconnected from the internal amplifier of the head unit before I can do the tuning because what you have to do is put a disc in there, play like a 40 hertz tone and a one kilohertz tone and turn the volume up to maximum and that'll just hurt my stereo and so I'm not going to tune it today I'll make another video out of that but yeah that's pretty much the quick job of today it only took me like a couple of hours even though it's been ages filming it um, so yeah thanks for watching guys the amplifier is live yay next step is to actually start installing speakers finally or do I want to do my PLC too actually here's an idea let's let you guys vote for the next one here's an idea so I'll put a poll up in this corner for for the voting, what do you guys want to see next? Do you want me to install my back speakers or do you want me to install this PLC2 remote which I plan on flush mounting probably down here on this sort of panel. So even though so even though this is like a box this actually uh, this actually disassembles and then I can either mount just this face depending on the size of it or there is a smaller one here. I can mount this little guy down on there probably mount it like that with the knob coming through it so it would look something like that that's how I plan on doing it so what do you guys want to see next back speakers or that wired or that mounted vote in the poll up in the top right hand corner up here I just realized I didn't test to see if the inverter is working as well so let's test that so this plugs in there we can turn our switch to on power status green and I think this also has has a little red LED in the center there as well got Grant's soldering iron here as an, an example so we'll just put this here there is a red LED which lights up on here when we plug it in so let's uh, try and plug it in there we go hard to see because of the light but that is on so the inverter is working sweet turn it off here we go all good so that's it for today's video guys i hope you enjoyed it um hopefully i make this video nice and quick since it was a quick little job thanks for watching hope you're enjoying the progress you're making with judy these last couple of weeks to make sure you're up to date with all the updates that go into her uh make sure you subscribe to my channel and if you hit the little bell button then it will notify you when i upload also you can like my facebook page it's just car audio etc and support me on patreon and again guys as always like thanks so much for coming back and watching i really appreciate the support i love reading your comments and give the video a like you know to promote it more share it with your friends anyone who's interested thanks so much for watching choose to be happy and i'll catch you in my next video kaki te ano.